Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. My topic today about chorionic vellus sampling. So, what we wanted to discuss today? The first trimester screening as an introduction to our topic. The definition and the concepts of chorionic villus sampling, the indications and the contraindication of chorionic villus sampling, comparison of chorionic villus sampling procedures, transabdominal and the trans cervical chorionic villus sampling techniques, precautions after chorionic villus sampling. Laboratory aspects, advantages of chorionic villus sampling, and lastly, the safety of chorionic villus sampling and the possible risks. Let us start our journey. Okay. If you see a couple with a history of a baby with Down syndrome, or there is a family history of chromosomal abnormalities or the couple or the partner has a recessive gene of any, of any chromosomal abnormality or X-linked disease so you should do first trimester screening for example Down syndrome trisomy 21 Okay, okay. So, what is the first trimester screening? You know, we have two biochemical tests, which is pregnancy associated plasma protein A and serum HCG. This is the biochemical test from maternal serum test. And one investigation by ultrasound, which is sonographic nuchal translucency measurement. This is the baby, this is the baby head, this is the baby back, this is behind the fetal neck. This sickness is measured by ultrasound. This is called nuchal translucency. If increased above the cutoff level, this suggesting Down syndrome. Okay? And also can be seen in other syndromes. So, in Down syndrome, I can diagnose or do screening test or suggesting Down syndrome from the two biochemical tests, pregnancy associated plasma protein A and the HCG, and by ultrasound by measuring the nuchal translucency. Okay? Okay. Then, if I'm suspecting, I want to be sure. This is the rule of our lecture today about the chorionic villi sampling because you can take a tissue of chorionic villi or placenta and do karyotyping and do cytogenic study and the molecular study so to confirm the diagnosis you should do one of the invasive procedure like chorionic villi sampling in the first trimester or amniocentesis and the study of the fetal cells during mid trimester. But of course, chorionic villa sampling is done in the first trimester, so you can reach the diagnosis too early and you can take a decision and make the patient take a decision. Okay? Okay. Any other else first trimester screening? Yes. A recent method called cell free fetal DNA testing. Please look to this picture. Some of cell-free fetal DNA, the fetal DNA passed to the maternal circulation. This is the, the fetal DNA go to the maternal circulation, the white one, this one and this one, this is the fetal DNA, a white, the bluish one is maternal DNA. We'll search for the fetal DNA in the maternal blood, okay? And this is a non-invasive technique and recent technique and has a high sensitivity reaching up to 
98% or more and the false positive rate of less than 0.5% but it is costly it cost high but not available in many countries so need experienced person need high cost so it is not suitable all the time also being has some false positive and some false negative results you cannot swear that the diagnosis is sure 100 percent however by doing a biopsy by chronic villa sampling you can reach the diagnosis or by doing amniocentesis in the second trimester you can reach the diagnosis so the diagnostic tool for fetal karyotyping and the, any other lab tests two major diagnostic tools for fetal karyotyping first trimester chorionic villa assembling and this is our topic today and the second trimester amniocentesis the advantages of early diagnosis as in this picture for chorionic villa assembling which is done in first trimester so early in pregnancy what is the advantage reduce maternal risk associated with termination of pregnancy of course if you terminate the pregnancy in the first trimester it is less complication than mid trimester second advantage is lessened emotional burden on the woman okay this picture show the trans cervical chorionic villa assembling here and here trans abdominal chorionic villa assembling both of them guided by ultrasound as you see here here another example of amniocentesis which is done in mid trimester but this is not our lecture today okay so we have two invasive procedure i may need them to be sure about the diagnosis chorionic villa assembling or amniocentesis invasive procedures still remain the golden standard test for fetal carry piping. Okay, what is the definition of chorionic villa assembly? It is getting a part of chorionic villi by needle inserted, trans cervical or through abdomen, and guided by ultrasound. Okay, and then examined in the lab. When I can do chorionic villa assembling, I can do it between 70 and the 91 days after last menstrual period. On, on other meaning, from 10 weeks gestation age to 12 weeks gestational age. It is invasive procedure, as we said before, performed in the first trimester for prenatal diagnosis. Okay, what about the concept of chor chorionic villa assembly? For years, prenatal diagnosis has relied on the analysis of the amniotic fluid fibroplasts, as in amniocentesis, as an indirect reflection of the fetal genetic makeup. Similarly, chorionic villi are fetal in origin and as such are also an appropriate and useful source of tissue for the evaluation of the fetal genetic disease. Their cytogenic, molecular, and the biochemical properties reflect those of the fetus. As you see in this picture, this is a chorionic villi, the outer sensitive trophoblast, the inner cyto trophoblast, highly divided, and the core mesenchyme in the middle here. Okay, the villi are partly composed of cytotrophoblast cells, which are an actively dividing source of spontaneous mitosis that can be used to obtain a rapid chromosomal analysis. The villi can be easily obtained without requiring puncture of the chorion or amnion membrane. So I can get the villi sample without puncturing the chorion or amnion membrane. Okay, 
this is the villi, as you see in the picture. In this part. Okay, what is the indication and the contraindication of chorionic villa sabling? The indication of chorionic villa sabling include previous child with non conjunctional chromosomal abnormality. Maternal age above 35 years. Parent is carrier of balanced translocation or other chromosomal disorder. Women who are carriers of sex linked disease. Any positive first trimester screen for trisomy 21 or 18. Both parents are carriers of autosomal recessive disease. Parent is carrier of balanced translocation or other chromosome disorder. What about the relative contraindication? I have two methods, transabdominal and the trans cervical. In transabdominal methods, may be interceding bowel. So I am afraid from injury with this bowel. Second, in cases of retroverted uterus with placenta located posteriorly, it would be so difficult to do it transabdominal. So it is relative contraindication. What about the trans cervical one? Suppose I have active cervical or vaginal herpes or vaginal bleeding in the previous two weeks or an inaccessible placenta or cervical polyps. All these are relative contraindication to do trans cervical chorionic villus assembly. Let us do some comparison between post procedure either trans abdominal or trans cervical as regard ease of learning. Trans abdominal is more easy and the adaptation of chorionic valve assembly technique can be easy, accepted, or learned. But learning curve still required. Yes, so training program is very important in this. What about trans cervical approach? Somewhat more complex than trans abdominal approach. What about the sample size? Which is bigger sample or larger sample? This trans cervical is larger sample, include the whole villa, while the trans abdominal one, the smaller sample include many small pieces. What about the placental location? In case of trans abdominal, better for fundal placenta or high anterior placenta. So, fundal or high anterior placenta is preferred in case of trans abdominal. A wild trans cervical better for posterior placenta. What about the patient discomfort? Which is more discomfort? The trans abdominal one is moderate discomfort for the patient, while the trans cervical one minimal to absent discomfort. Let us see this picture, please. On the upper left side here, this is the trans cervical. As you see, the castor introduced through the cervical canal to reach the chorionic villi and take sample of the tissue of the villi. Guided by ultrasound. On the right side here, you can see the castor appearing here, entering the uterus through the cervix to get a sample from Chorionic villa guided by ultrasound, of course. This is a picture of an ultrasound, abdominal ultrasound. The other picture here is trans abdominal chorionic villa sampling. You see the needle here taking the sample guided by ultrasound, and this is the ultrasound picture. And you can see the needle passing through the anterior abdominal wall to the chorionic villa to take. The sample. So it is done guided by ultrasound as we see in these pictures. Let us see the how the procedure done trans abdominal and trans cervical. 
First, the position of the uterus in transabdominal procedure. The position of the uterus, placenta, and the bowel are confirmed by ultrasound. Okay? okay. And this is for both procedures. I should define the site of the placenta, the position of the uterus, the gestational age should be confirmed, confirmed, the fetal viability, everything. Then the abdomen of the patient is aseptically prepared with bovidone ID solution to avoid infection. Then under continuous ultrasound guiding, as in the picture, an 18 or 20 gauge spinal needle is inserted into the placenta, as in the picture here. Care must be taken to avoid puncturing the power. Tissue is retrieved using negative pressure and three to four back and forth movements. When performing chorionic villa sampling in one pregnancy, each placental site must be distinguished and sampled separately. It is something challenging, really, if you are doing this for twins. This requires meticulous ultrasound examination and detailed topographic description with drawings. Separate tissue retrieval using trans abdominal approach for one sample and the trans cervical approach for the other may minimize the risk of cross-contamination. What about the other technique, which is trans-cervical chorionic villa sampling technique, as you see here in the picture? Again, the position of the uterus and the placenta are confirmed by ultrasound examination, as in the other procedure. Adequate bladder filling may enhance ultrasound visualization, while overfilling may push the uterus upward. The patient is placed in lysotomy position and the vulva and the vagina are prepared aseptically using also bovidone iodine solution. After insertion of a speculum to show the cervix. Then a thin polyethylene caster with a round tip malleable style is shaped into slight curve as you see here this is the curve okay? okay and gently inserted through the cervical canal as we are doing now here inside the cervical canal under ultrasound guidance of course all the procedures need ultrasound guidance the assistant adjusts the position of the ultrasound group to visualize the caster tap. The caster is advanced along the placenta. As you see here, the caster is advanced along the placenta. The stylet is removed and 20 ml syringe containing a tissue culture medium is connected. The caster is then removed slowly with negative pressure. This is a syringe containing culture medium. The, sur the syringe is visually inspected for the presence of branching tissue floating in the media, sometimes with the aid of low power dissecting microscope. What are the precautions after chorionic villa assembling? Don't forget that RH negative people should receive anti D immunoglobulin, as in this picture should receive the injection of anti-D to prevent the occurrence of RH sensitization. This is for cases with RH negative wife and RH positive husband. Neural tube defect screening is carried out during the second trimester using the either ultrasound or alpha fetoprotein measurement. Although chorionic villa sampling may result in transient elevation of maternal serum alpha protein level, it returns to normal level by the time of second trimester 
maternal serum screening. And you are doing maternal serum screening to detect any congenital anomaly. What about the lab aspects? We obtained samples, 5 to 30 milligram of villus material. Villus tissue is carefully separated from any adherent decidua under dissecting microscope and it is treated with strepsin to separate cytotrophoblast cell from the mesenchyme core. This is a mesenchyme core and this is a cytotrophoblast cell. We wanted to separate them. Then we have two methods, either direct method or rapid method or indirect method or delayed method, or other name called the culture method. What is the difference between both? The direct method, I can do a karyotyping test, and the result appear within two days. I'm using the cytotrophoblast cells, which is rapidly dividing. Also, it has an advantage of being a rapid test because the result was in two days and also minimize the risk of maternal cell contamination. So the possibility of error due to contamination of some maternal cells is not present here in direct method. Okay? On the other side, the indirect method or culture method, long-term culture method analyzes the mesenchymal core of the villi, not the cytotrophoblastic cells, the cytotrophoblastic cells will disappear. While the mesenchyme core of the villi is used here for culture method. The results appear within six to eight days, so it is, needs a longer time. The culture method may represent the fetal karyotype more correctly than analysis of the cytotrophoblast and direct method. Why? Because the mesenchymal core of the villi is genealogically closer to the embryo, and any trace trophoblast cells disappear in a few days during culture. So, every method, direct or indirect or culture method, has certain advantage. Direct, rapid test, I get the result within two days. Culture method, Delayed one, the result after eight days. Direct method, use the cytotrophoblastics, which is highly dividing cells, while the culture method using the mesenchymal core, which is more close to the embryo, genealogically. Okay? okay. But, the disadvantage of the culture is being, may give some error due to contamination of some maternal cells. This is one of the disadvantages of the culture method. The another disadvantage is being delayed result. The direct trophoblast analysis may prevent maternal cell contamination because the residue has a low mitotic index. Maternal cell contamination can be minimized by obtaining an adequate amount of villus tissue and selecting the typical villus material while discarding a typical fragments. Ideally, chorionic villus samples should be analyzed by both direct and the indirect or culture method. By both method. Okay. Then various analytic methods are available. Like what? Like karyotyping, like cytogenic study, like metabolic or biochemical analysis, like molecular methodology for hemoglobin analysis. Give me some examples, like fluorescence in cyto hybridization, what's called FISH, FISH. This is a rapid method for assessing targeted chromosomal abnormalities, such as trisomy 21, 18, or 30. Another example, quantitative fluorescence polymerase chain reaction, UFBCR. Another example, 
DNA sequencing and the comparative genomic hybridization TGH. Don't be confused. You can remember the abbreviation FISH, F-I-S-H, U-F-B-C-R, and lastly CGH. This picture show you trisomy 21. Trisomy 21 is Down syndrome. Advantage of chorionic bell sampling. First, accuracy of the lab results. The reliability of the sampling and the safety of the procedure if performed after 10 weeks of gestation by experienced operators. Second, studies have established the superior safety to chorionic bell assembling over the first trimester amniocentesis. Additionally, over the last decade, the complication rates of chorionic bell assembling and mid-trimester amniocentesis are comparable due to the reduction of chorionic bell assembling proteins. Even in some recent studies, they found that even the chorionic bell assembling is less complication than amniocentesis and has also another advantage which is very important which is the early diagnosis of the problem because chorionic bell assembling is done between 10 to 12 weeks gestational age. What about the safety of chorionic bell assembling and possible risks? Complication if not done properly, may reach to pregnancy loss, bleeding from the vagina, amniotic fluid leakage, and infection. Although these complications are rare, and if the procedure done properly under complete aseptic condition with experienced person, very rare to happen this complication. Let us see some reports have suggested that an association between chorionic vella slam, uh, sampling and the limb reduction defects or oromandibular limb hypogenesis abnormalities were correlated with early chorionic vella sampling performed around the seven weeks gestation. The overall risk of limb reduction from chorionic vella sampling is 0.03 up to 0.1 percent which is not significantly different from that in general population and the risk of limb reduction appears to be associated with the timing of periodic bill assembling less than 20 weeks may increase the possibility of this anomaly however if you did the periodic bill assembling between 10 to 12 weeks, there is no limb deformity or oromandibular deformity rather than in control group in general population. So, there is limited information relating the, to the risk of vertical transmission of invasive procedure in women chronically infected with hepatitis B or C or HIV. In a systematic review in 2019, the procedure related risks of miscarriage following amniocentesis and the chorionic bill assembling are lower than currently quoted to women. The risk appears to be negligible when these interventions were compared to control groups of the same risk profile and this is the title of the meta analysis to maximize the outcome of chronic bell assembling should be performed by an experienced team of physician ultrasonographer and the genetic laboratory technicians and the obstetrician should be experienced very well to do ultrasound because it is better to do the test by himself and are under ultrasound guidance. 
Before initiating a chorionic villus sampling program, operators should have considerable experience in the placement of the castor, which can be achieved either in a formal training program with observation of fifth procedure, followed by close hand on supervision of another 100 cases. Imagine if he did hands on supervision of 100 cases, he will gain much experience. So the possibility of complication is very rare. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.